What's the leader? I'm going to tell you. I'm sure you know. I'm going to tell you all of this. A leader is someone who can speak to a crowd. You know what the three biggest stress things in the world a person can experience? Most people, one of the top three stresses they have would be publicly speaking. Leaders don't have problems publicly speaking. I wrote down some notes today I want to share with you because I know I'm hitting this thing. So what are some other traits of a leader? A leader uses eye contact when speaking. They look at the person's eyes. A leader stands tall. If I'm walking across the playground and there's a bully in the playground and I walk like a leader, you think I'm going to be the first guy they pick on? Yeah. Nope. Bullies are cowards. They pick on people they think are weaker than them. Not people who they think are stronger than them. So if you walk like a leader, your chances of getting bullied is reduced. By the way, Karate West is a, is a no bully zone. Bullying isn't allowed here. If any of my Karate West students or at their schools bully and I find out about it, you're not allowed here. I don't put up with bullies. How many kids have been bullied before? Um, 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 um. Lots of us have. Remember where I was? I remember sixth grade, my family moved, went to a new school. I knew no one at that school, because I went through one through five at my other grade school. I get to this brand new school, and for two weeks, I had to get in a fight every single night going home, because I was the new kid there, and they're trying to bully me. What they didn't know was I was one of five boys. And I grew up getting beat up on. I was used to it. So when they bullied me, and I got to fight, and I'm not telling you to do this, because this day and age you can't do that. This is many, many, many more. I usually ended up on top end of the set. I had big brothers that are way bigger than those guys were. A leader has a strong and clear voice. So what does it take to become a leader? Well, it all comes from confidence. Confidence in what you know and confidence in what you can do. Do you feel that if you are skillful enough to win 99.9% .9 of any fight that somebody tried to fight with you and you couldn't talk your way out, but if you did have to fight and they pinned you in a corner that you would definitely defeat them, would you be pretty confident? Yes. Yeah. Learning to fight is all about not fighting. If I know I'm gonna beat you, I have no reason in the world to fight you because my ego doesn't need to be stroked to make myself feel better. I know in my heart what I can do. I have confidence. Your parents, your teachers want you to be champions of life. We want you to be leaders. We want you to live happy, well-adjusted, and productive lives. It means you're producing, you're giving back. Not only producing for yourself and your family, but you're giving back. Because we all have to be bigger than ourselves. We need to contribute to the greater good of people. And we can't do that unless we're actually producing ourselves. Leaders do that. I feel, and this is my personal belief, that a lot of what's wrong in America today is that we have an over amount of abundance. We have too much. And too many people have too much time pondering you know, their life, because life's too easy for them. If you go to many third world nations, you don't see people going to the drugstore eating antidepressants. They're more busy wondering about what they're gonna eat tomorrow. Does that make sense? What's your teacher's job? To make you look good. What's your job? Make your teacher look good. <laughs> we want our students to be emotionally powerful. Emotionally powerful. Physically strong. And have the skills that make you feel fearless. Did you know, because there's so many athletic programs being cut in school, do you know that in the military now, how many adults in the room have been in the military? Anybody? My father was a World War II veteran. My two brothers were Vietnam veterans. Mother brother was a Navy lifer. So 
by I'm familiar with the military, but the military now has changed the physical requirements to get in the military because the recruits that come in today can't do the physical requirements that their fathers and mothers did. That's a sad state of affairs. You need to, you need to be strong and stay fearless. As your teacher, we know that the process is more important than the event. Process is more important than event. It's not what you get when you earn it that's so important. It's what you become earning it. Does that make sense? Yeah. As your teachers, we set a level of standards and we help you get there. So by the time you go from white belt to black belt, we want you to be a leader. Well, what happens? Well, in the process, we were setting the standards, but by the time you make black belt, we want you creating the standard within yourself. We want you to live the life of a black belt. We want you to have high standards for yourself that you create, that you demand yourself, that your teacher's not demanding of you, your parents aren't demanding that of you, you are. Because that's who you are. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> that's what leaders do. During this journey of growth, from white to black, there will be times when you'll fit, fall victim to what we call the imposter syndrome. Who knows what that is? Here's what it is. How many adults in this room have been complimented either on Facebook or email or by text or just in conversation? A hundred times by something you did that's pretty cool, but one person didn't like it and criticized you. <laughs> what do you focus on? A hundred good plus, plus things or that one negative thing? That's the imposter syndrome. We spend too much time majoring in the minor. Forgetting is a valuable skill, a very, very valuable skill. Ignore the distractors. When I started my first business, my father passed away. I was 21 years old, I was in college, I had school loans, and my mom needed help with the bill. So I quit college. When my father was a kid, his father took off with the town one day, never came home. We have his mom with seven brothers and sisters, kids. So my dad quit, college, quit eighth grade. See, I didn't have to quit till college. And when I started working, everybody told me I couldn't do what I wanted to do. There was a whole bunch of people telling me negative stuff. No one's telling me positive stuff. But again, I was fearless. Why? Because the people who influenced me in my life, like Cynthia Matthews, I believed in myself. And when the banks went away money to start a business, I started the business without them. And then when the business became successful, they're all trying to loan me money. I said, I don't need your money now. And since then, I borrowed one time from a bank my whole adult life. And I'm 65 years old in three weeks. I borrowed money about three years ago to build out this building, which is quite expensive, on a five-year note. I paid it off in eight months. Why? I'm fearless. I believe in myself. And that's what I want you to believe in yourself. When someone tells you you can't do something, you never believe them. As long as it's legal and ethical and moral, you never believe them. They say you can't do something because it's the wrong thing to do, believe them. Okay. Whatever you attempt in life, passion is what allows you to thrive. To have passion, you must have to work on four things. Attitude. How do you look at the world? Is that problem you have there a stumbling block or a stepping stone to learn from? Wisdom is just knowledge that's been proved by time to be right or wrong. By making mistakes and making corrections. So you have to have attitude. You have to have motivation. You have to be willing to do it. Put in the work. If you're willing to put in the work, you'd be surprised how many boys and girls, men and women, are not willing to put in the work. One of the things you should be willing to put in the work on is you 
You want to get great grades in school. Why? You want to get to the best colleges and universities. Why? You want to have a career you do what you want to do. That makes sense. So we need attitude, we need motivation, we need self-confidence. You need to believe in yourself. To me, that's what pride was all about. Getting you to believe in yourself so you're, you can stand tall and stand up to the naysayers, the people who are going to try to beat you down. Some of your friends who maybe aren't so much of your friends, you really look at them hard. Then you need perseverance. It's easy to quit. Lots of people quit every day at all things in life. We've all wanted to quit sometime or another. But leaders, if they know it's important, they don't quit. They find another way to get the job done. Life is a dance between two words. Yes and no. Yes equals connection. And no equals protection. What do I mean by that? Again, yes equals connection. And no equals protection. We need to say yes to all the dreams that we want to achieve and the life we want to live. By agreeing to say yes to the commitments, the learning, the work that's required to accomplish our dreams. No is not the key word of attack. No is what we say and we use if something or someone isn't adding value to our schooling, our business, our personal lives. We say no to things that, in our lives that don't bring us joy, and don't add value to our existence. It's a choice. That's the dance between yes and no. There are three decisions we make every waking moment, whether you're a boy or a girl or a man or a woman, and those things we're always thinking about is milliseconds, all the time, all day long, between this yes and no is, what should I focus on? Who am I listening to? What am I watching? What am I paying attention to? Two, what does it mean to me? Is it a stumbling block or is it a stepping stone? Is this, do I look at this from a positive point of view or a negative point of view? And the third thing is, we're always asking ourselves, what should I do about this? My challenge to everyone here is to evaluate how you look at things and what you're going to do about it. You want to live a life that's healthy life, without drugs, without smoking, without vices, things that can cause you harm, making wrong decisions, or do you want to live a life that's not that way? I had a starting point. I call it value clarification. My starting point is, where do I start at? Because when you are your age, there are certain things you want that are different at your parents' age that are different at my age, because they're different generations and you have things you want at different ages. But my value clarification was, I didn't want to be the richest man in the graveyard. I watched an interview a few years back by Stephen Jobs. You 